Hi, CSD2601 students. This is just a brief um, video to um, check in on you as you do your portfolios. And in particular, I just want to go over some of the processes involved with um, setting up general MIDI, especially in Reaper, because um, from your second assignments, I get the impression that some of you are struggling a little bit with this. So I just want to make sure that you're all on track and you know at this stage what is happening and how to actually um, create general MIDI and um, create some kind of composition in it and export it as a MIDI file. So just gonna go through the basic steps in um, Reaper. So you should see here my Reaper um, desktop view. So the first thing to do is to set up our, um, as you should know by now, set up your MIDI output and MIDI input too, if you have an input device and your audio input and output. So let's see about that. We've got options, preferences. So you can see here, uh, okay, so let me just show you where I went. So you go to audio here, and then MIDI devices. And then under that you should see Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. And it says mode enabled. So if it says disabled, just double click on Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth and it'll become, it should give you the option to enable it. And you can also check under audio device here. So audio system, so this is basically where you select your audio driver. So you should see a few options here. Um, if you haven't downloaded an ACO driver yet, that stands for audio streaming in out, I thoroughly recommend you do so. You can get one from um, ACO for all. I sent out the link in your study material a while back so you can just follow that. It's um, by far the best option in terms of audio drivers. And then here, you're just going to select um, your particular uh, ACO driver. You can see I have a few options. There's ACO for all there. Um, the one I'm using is this Yamaha Steinberg USB because that um, is the one that comes with the audio interface that I'm using. <clears throat> then you have your inputs and outputs. So my inputs are Steinberg CI1. So that's just the microphone input. Uh, you won't be using that really. It doesn't really make a difference um, because we're dealing with MIDI here, not audio. Of course, I'm using the... Um, the microphone input because I'm using this microphone right here. Um, output range, this is very important. It tells you where your audio is going to go to. So depending on what system you're using, um, it might go to your um, internal speakers or if you have external speakers, you can select them here. So that's your audio and your MIDI input and output. Once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is set up a track on your sequencer here. So you can do that a number of ways. You can go um, insert track or use the shortcut control T. The method I like personally, because it's by far the quickest is just to double click in this track area over here, like so, and there you go. So there's your track. Now, once you've got this, you need to tell it that you want it to output. Um, you want the track to output to your general MIDI Synthesizer. So if you just click on this little root button here, and you'll see here it says MIDI hardware outputs, no outputs. You drop this down, you can see it says Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. So just select that. That should be all you need to do here. Uh, the next thing you need to do is actually insert a little MIDI item so that you have on your sequencer window here a block that you can um, edit. So you go insert new MIDI item. And there's your little block. You can double click on that. Now you should be able to just draw in notes. There's your notes. Now I think um, we can't hear them because I'm using simultaneously two different audio programs, namely the program that I'm recording this on. So let me try changing here my um, ACO driver to ACO for all, and this might help us somewhat. Let's see. There we 
we are. Now we're getting some sound. <clears throat> okay, so that's the process then of setting up one track and getting MIDI on it. We can have more than one track, of course, and naturally in your project, you'll need to have more than one track. So each time you add another track, you have to do this process again. You go Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth, um, select the track and go insert new MIDI item. There it comes. Now you can draw in more notes here, or if you have a keyboard, you can program them in, of course. Let's make this one a little bit higher. Now, of course, we don't want every track to be piano, do we? So here where it says program, you can put in a program change to change what instrument is playing. So I'm just going to draw in anything here. 47, this should be strings, I think, of some sort. And let's hear that. Yes, that's the timpani. Let's go down a little bit. Okay, that's some kind of string instrument. Sounds like a cello, maybe. But you'll notice that now my original track has also they're both playing back now as cellos rather than um, as a um, piano. So we need to set them to play back on particular tracks. Uh, sorry, channels, I mean. So uh, You can go select all here and then just right click on one of the notes <coughs> and choose note channel and then put it on channel one and then on your other track again select all your notes so you can just um, press Control a will select them all right click on a note note channel send them to channel two so if the notes aren't all on different channels on each track then they'll all play the same um, uh, through the same channel, which means all of them will play the same instrument, which obviously you don't want. Let's hear this back now and see what we're dealing with. Okay, still both set to one instrument, so we need to change this physically back to piano, so I'm setting it to one there. Now you can hear we have one piano track and one... Um, cello track. Obviously um, I'm just selecting random notes here, there's no composition going on, um, <clears throat> but this is just the process that you need to follow. And then from here you can just export, so say file, export project MIDI. All of these settings should be fine, you don't really need to worry about any of them. I'm just going to change the name of the file here to, um, let's call it test. Like so. Um, and there it's exported it. So now we can say show in Explorer here. And it should come up. Now we can try playing it back in Windows Media Player. And hopefully it'll play back properly. So let's see what happens. And indeed, there we have our two tracks one with piano one with um, some string instrument. So that is the basic process then of how you, um, you set up MIDI in Reaper and export to a MIDI file. And remember again that um, if you use settings on the mixer, like you try and turn down the volume here, then um, that's not going to work because that won't get exported on your MIDI channel. If you want to change, if you want to use your control changes, you must use these ones here. So there's your volume, Draw in volume like that, expression, etc. So this is where you must do this in pan as well. So I'll leave it to you to apply your knowledge of what you've learned about these different control changes. And um, good luck with the exam and I'm um, looking forward to seeing all your compositions. Bye.